lifting you higher. You are listening to an exclusive interview. A S O T. The state of trance. Welcome to another uh, ten questions. Uh, a new thing we're doing here at the State of Trance Studios to go a little bit into depth with the guests that we have in the show this week. You have Ashley Woolrich and Garrett Emery. How are you guys doing? Very good, thank you. Yourself? I'm great. Yo yo. Where are your sunglasses? Oh, you're supposed to have them on because oh, you lost the bet. Come on, get them on. Well. Get them, get them on. <laughs> get the sunglasses. Come on. Again. The deal was the entire time you oh. spent in the radio studio. Exactly. So. Yeah. So. so there's no exceptions. Oh. All right, Just, let's get it going. Uh, the first question is from Wizard404. What's the story behind you guys teaming up? Why did you start teaming up? I think we've always worked really well musically. Mm-hmm. Um, ever since we did Mansion together. Um, every single track it just it, we've always worked like on the music we've always had the same kind of mindset it's like a mirror yeah like I'll always send Gaz something or he'll send me something and in the past when I've worked with different people and I think Gaz will agree there's always, there's always a process of mm, mm, that I don't really like that or I don't really like that but we've always like uh, musically yeah. always been on the same wavelength we never never argue which is really strange in DJ collaborations as you never. know like whatever <clears throat> it's healthy to argue sometimes no, I guess yeah, yeah. no it's like I mean we'd happily argue we argue about other stuff but just yeah. musically we, we seem to have the same opinions about yeah. everything and you agree on every like little melody or every effect you're like hey that's cool not always we, whenever Ash goes I can improve it I listen to it and I'm like it is improved and if I send Ash a melody and he's like oh, I don't really like that I'm like you f- <laughs> like, no, no, actually, he's right. That one, that one does suck. So, um, yeah. it, it's a great working relationship in in that way. Mm. Nice. And you lived in uh, LA most of the time. You were making this album, probably, and you were in the UK. So you were just working online on 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 Dropbox or something like that, or it's it's incredible. well, it, you're on Crash Base. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Crash Base. <laughs> and, and, and I'm, on, I'm on Logic, and, and we've always just gone like stem process. Yeah. So like, if Gaz has done a melody. Um, he'll bounce that to me and he'll also send me the MIDI and then I'll, I'll work around that or if it, vice versa I'll do this and he'll say oh, but how do you do it with plugins do you own the same plugins we, we it's mainly we always use the same but it's always Gaz it's really weird this is why it's always worked really good he'll make it like a sound or a melody and it's mm-hmm. never a case that I've turned around and said oh yeah just send me the MIDI it's mm-hmm. always been oh that's, that sounds really good so he'll just send it to me and then I'll just like layer it and layer it and layer it and then Gaz will layer it so you know, I, I will tend to make demos incredibly quickly. It's just yeah. how I work. Very, very short. Quick focus. melodies. And- yeah, when the melody comes up, I want to get that <clears throat> track laid out as quickly as possible because mm-hmm. you lose the magic otherwise. So yeah. Yeah. I might be on a flight and I will have an entire working demo of a track in two hours. It's arranged, the melody's there, the vocal's in place, we know where the build-up is. And then I'm like, while it's hot, I just capitalise on that. And then I'll send it over to Ash and go... Here's the basic structure. Here's then, a finished song. You do the rest. <laughs> and then, and then <laughs> Ash will yeah, make it. Yeah. Ash will take my terrible sounding demo and make it sound beautiful. And then towards the end, he might give me back the stems just to do some finishing stuff. That that's usually how it works, right? Yeah, it, it, it always changes because he he'll do like a demo really quickly, mm-hmm. where I can't do that. I'm really like you're slower. Um, it's it's weird. I just can't do. I can't sit there and make a melody and it sound crap. Mm-hmm. And I just get really anal about it. I'm like, oh no, I've got to do this, got to do this, got to do this. But Gaz is like, no, I'm here's like, a melody, bam, sh- sh- bang, just like quick. But right, I, I, I know how the finished thing can sound, so yeah. I don't lose time. I, I just find you have a very short period when a track is fresh to That's you. That's true. Yeah. Once yeah. you've heard that melody, you know, probably the thirty or forty times, you've lost the magic. So for me. I want to get the whole track laid out while it still has that magic that a first time listener would get. Yeah. And that just means like I'm incredibly intensive when I work. I'm yeah. literally like say two or three hours, but I'm not making cups of coffee and I'm not chatting. It's like bang, 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 get the thing done. I need to go and have a lie down afterwards. Like it's very, very And when intense. it's a successful track, you're lucky enough that you can hear it hundreds of times more when you play it out, right? Exactly, yeah. exactly. Okay, the next question is from Arminopedia. How many bottles did you drink while making this album? Well, hang on. I worked this out of um, how many hours we spent in it, like together, collabor- collaborative. Yeah. And it was, and it was, it was, it was thousands. thousands. How did you, you figure that? Because if you work out like over two years, like, yeah, two years, and then an average of how much per day, and then I worked it out because my math and English isn't that great anyway. <laughs> 
and but worked out <laughs> math and, and it worked out and it's you were well, I was gonna say the fact you say I worked it out math yes. <laughs> doesn't, doesn't give me that confidence much confidence in I the wasn't really think that he was coming like with a like um, I went to do logic and I saw the project files and it took me that much time and and, but, and it went but yeah we like looking back it, it was it was so there's so many hours but what was the actual original question the question was how many bottles did you drink while making this album but bottles of what bottle of what vodka water well or any, looking any, at the, any uh, sort of bottle. looking at the green room right now I would say Heineken's <laughs> Oh wow! <laughs> I, mean, That's a lot. No, I mean, I don't drink when I'm making music. Okay. No, me, me neither. I've, I'm, I'm sure some people get a good result, but I've never, ever, I'm not joking, once in my life yeah. drunk alcohol oh. in a studio environment. Never. Well, that answers the question. Zero. Zero. Zero, yeah. Coffees? That would be a different question. Even <laughs> bottles of coffee, yes. <laughs> but but alcohol, no. I, I like, get through a lot of Diet Coke, so probably quite a few of those. But I've never drunk when 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 especially doing this album because it was so intense mm-hmm. and it, everything like when it come down to the last minute, it was all deadline, deadline, deadline. Yeah. So like drinking would just be out of the question. It'd just be you know coffees and 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 like high caffeine drinks. Yeah. yeah. Why do you take off the sunnies again? Put them on. Yeah, oh, he keeps taking God them off. Sake. Put them on. It was a bet. You lost it. So <laughs> yeah. the next We're... question is from uh, Pazzi. This is actually for Garrett. Is Garrett planning on doing his laser face show in Europe? Uh, we just announced one in Ibiza, mm-hmm. um, which is um, in September. So people have lots of time to, to plan a trip, which is a, <clears throat> the legendary um, Terrace Amnesia. Wow. Um, yeah, I'm so excited because I've played the main room many, many times. Mm-hmm. Um, for for cream, but I've never played the terrace, and I always used to go and look at the terrace, and they'd have like Calvin Harris or Eric Priz or somebody yeah. playing, and I was like, that is the room I want to play, and I was never ever allowed. So, the fact that <laughs> not allowed. <laughs> no, Gareth, you're not allowed here. <laughs> I was I was told I was not cool enough to play the terrace, and they were right. Like I, w- I wasn't cool enough. Um, but now they've given it to me for, like, for laser face. So, a dream come true, um, right? It is, it is an absolute dream come true. And um, I think we probably will do some other European ones next year. We just try and keep the laser face shows quite minimal because we mm-hmm. want to make sure each one is Makes sense, yeah. just super special. Yeah. Um, the last thing we want to do is say that was half assed, like the lasers didn't look as good yeah. as they should have done. So I'll be for the first one in September. So if you want to see laser face in Europe, you should fly to that because after that, it'll be um, 20, 2020, I think. Can't wait. I want to go. I think I'll go. Take take a vacation. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty cool. Like seeing seeing the one when I played Seattle. Well, I've I've seen a lot of it because of uh, social media, of course. When I saw that you were programming everything, uh, so it's so it's kind of something that well, you your need. your remix of Longest Road. That's how I see it. Fantastic, <laughs> just an amazing, and it was a good track in my sets. Uh, but then when Anthony programmed it for Laserface, and um, for people that don't know that. Every track in Laserface is sort of uniquely choreographed. Yeah. So he'll spend like a week or so on each track giving it Unbelievable. its, it's um. entire laser show, um, which plays completely in time. And when I saw that track, I was like, wow, that one. There's it's, enough action going on. It's pretty, pretty amazing. Okay, the next question is from uh, Guillaume Luchier. I hope I didn't uh, I pronounce it in the right way. <laughs> well, if, if you felt it was wrong, let Warbridge have a go. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> well he took his sunnies off again. I don't know why. I'm... Anyway, <laughs> put the sunnies on. Come on. <laughs> Uh, you guys are both in the industry for quite a long time already. So he uh, asked, how would you describe the global trend scene in comparison to 10 years ago? Ashley? I think uh, 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's when 10 that years... That was Faces time, I think. It's literally 10 year anniversary coming yeah. out for Faces. Yeah. Right. Um, Bloody but, great track that is. Oh. Well, that's literally one of my first ever tracks that I put out. So I was like very new in the industry. Mm-hmm. And then um, that's, when, that's when I first met Gaz. Because um, we gave it to you as a promo for ASOS. And I felt so fortunate because I remember it was the first time I'd ever played ASOS events and it was yeah. in Wuppertal. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was in um, Birmingham and um, one in the Netherlands all over a weekend. There was only three ASOS shows that year yeah. and I was given faces by Andy, Ashley, Ashley Moore, sorry, Ashley, Andy Moore and, and Megan Nealon. I was like, yeah, yeah. what an absolute beast. And I started every set with it. Yeah. And I still, still love that tune. Yeah. And... Um, so how is how is it different from from ten years ago to now? For me, like ten years ago, that was when I was literally starting out on my first ever gigs. Um, yeah. But tra- I think like it's grown. I think we but had you in Birmingham in the second room, right? That was literally yeah that same night. Uh, so we, I was playing the second room. Yeah. And you know I met Gaz um, when he was playing it. So for me, the first time when Faces came out was watching Gaz plays. Yeah, um, and how is it different ten years ago from now? How do you feel like the the global scene, in the sound in general? The, the music, the the, the trance sound has changed a lot. Yeah, 
a lot. Um, everybody's getting a lot more experimental with trance sounds. Mm-hmm. And obviously, uh, as, as the years go on, the, the music quality and everything is going to get a lot better anyway because of the engineering. Mm-hmm. And, and the trance sounds and the sounds is just getting a lot bigger. But as far as a global scale, um, Asia and all these places are changing a lot. Yeah. A lot. I think as with the sound of trance, as long as it, as long as the genre and the people making it remember that the diversity of trance mm-hmm. is its strength, yeah, rather than its weakness. And do you feel that's different from ten years ago? I feel now there's more of a movement to just rally behind a very certain particular like very sound. Very niche. Yeah. yeah. So people pick sort of the like, let's just call it for argument's sake, proper trance, and yeah. they go, "This is proper trance." And and for me. Um, the reason why the genre has stayed so big for so long is because it evolves. And I remember going to see Armin probably close to 20 years ago, and he would play from really deep progressive, like Sasha and people. Breakbeat and stuff like break that. Breakbeat yeah. right through to hard yeah. trance. And that's what I loved. And over the years, we saw, like, say, Marcus Schultz come and take things progressive. We saw mm-hmm. Sander Van Dorn take it in more of a techno direction. And <clears throat> I just love that about the genre. And um, so when I kind of, it kind of upsets me when people go, this very particular 138 sound. Only this is trance. Only, only yeah. this is trance. Yeah. It, it should be broad. And that's, that's kind of what I love about it. So I just hope that the fans keep an open mind yeah. um, because the genre is much more beautiful when you embrace many styles and and the producers do too. I mean, to look at it straight away, you look at the album, like it goes from a massive contrast. We've got like classical, but with trance influence. We've Mm -hmm. got this with trance influence. We've got tracks which sound trancey, but they're like 124 BPM. If it sounds trance, it is trance. That's it's the simple. Thing, that's yeah. I think. So that's the biggest thing that you you say in the last 10 years that it became a little bit too, like this is trance, this is not trance or something like that. I, I think so. It was I more think, open-minded back then, I, I guess. I think people concern themselves too much with the question, is it trance? It's and a feeling. Is, isn't it trance? It's a feeling. 100%. You, you definitely can't lay down a set of parameters. And I think <laughs> it's the BPM. Like, oh, this is lower than 135. This is not trance. Yeah. Well, I think that's just... Well, that's how the Who's Afraid of 138 began. It was kind of a sort of a joke, in yeah. a way. And I think a lot of people took what was a joke and made it too serious. But, <laughs> yeah. you know, some, some of the greatest trance tracks of all time, Bedrock, Heaven Sent, yeah. um, Sasha, Expander. And I just urge people like who maybe newer to the scene, if you don't know those tracks, go and listen to them. They're incredible. They Open inspired almost all of us today making music. And both of those tracks, this the tragic thing, would not be classified as trance. Look at Eric Prids, he makes some of the tranciest music. 100%. Yeah. He's that's, more trancy than most trance producers. That's true, yeah. <laughs> People go, Eric Prids, he's not trance. That's why I, I, f- I thought it was great that uh, we had Deza on the show this week, like the progressive sound. I he love that as well. Exactly, yeah. exactly. All right, so the next question, and this is um, quite an important one from Nadine37. Who is the better singer? And I want to hear proof. Singer, it who's mu- the best singer out of you two? It won't be me. I it must guarantee. be. It must be Ashley. I okay, been, okay, no, all right. I Let me put some effects on. No, I'm. I'm the worst. I'm not even going to do it. Come on. I never yep. refuse anything. I can't. I can't do it. My, s- my wife is laughing in the corner because she knows. Like, if I could sing, I promise you would have. I, I've, I, I've, I've had never to heard the glasses. Him, I've never heard him sing. I've, but, I've had to wear the glasses all day, so I think, you know, it must have got to be fair to just hear just a couple of liners. I'm just. <laughs> Just, Stand just a couple of lines. Just a couple of lines. Nah, I'm not saying I'll, 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 I'll rap for you if, if you want. No, because I've heard you doing that so many times. That that do 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 do. Yeah, I, I can, I can, whatever that track I can, is. I'll, I'll, I can freestyle rap. Yeah, come on. Go okay. On. Do you want um, reverb? A little bit of reverb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we finished the album, so now we're through. We're coming with Ruben in the ASOT studio. We're talking about music, things that we've made trance that we love trends that we may be afraid of um so i'm on the mic ashes too yeah. when are we done we want to go and get some food um <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> this is super fun i love coming here amsterdam mate i've got no fear um there you go i'm just good lad <laughs> yes. there you have it a freestyle rap by gareth emery <laughs> so, so so absolutely amazing <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> All right, we're going with the next question. What was the concept behind Lionheart? This was a weird one. Yeah, like Lionheart. How it all came about. It was it was quick, but um, it was. How did that? How did it, that? It, it, yeah, it was a funny one because it was one of those <laughs> tracks that came to us virtually. Like the vocal was just perfect, and 
normally I'll spend an incredible amount of time producing well, a vocal. Yeah. yeah, and we, we got that vocal. And not only was it a great song, it was recorded per- perfectly. There was very little for me to do. So I made this original demo completely different. It was much more of a progressive. And I sent it over to Ash and he goes, I love the vocal. He said, I think it should be- the rest is not so good. <laughs> the, rest is, <laughs> the rest is not so good. And it just turned out he had a demo he'd been working on completely independently that was in the same key what? and okay. almost fitted. Yeah. So basically we just bootlegged his demo with the Lionheart vocal and, and um, somehow like square peg went into a round <laughs> hole yeah. and came out a diamond. It was just like, wow, this is, this is, and then it just turned out that, you know, it was one of the biggest, biggest so far what everybody was loving and uh, it's just one of those things it just happens and it's like wow perfect yeah. so there's still a progressive track laying around without vocals right now there's a progressive track without vocals laying around yeah made under line I'll just send, send it over to you maybe do a, do yeah, a collab on let's it let's do it nice alright the next question is from uh, Snei Makiji 27 what is your goal in making music I think I think everybody is the same they just want like when I make music for instance or when we've been doing the album, we've been, you know, you just want to make people happy with it. Mm-hmm. And every time I do a track, I'm always like, I hope people enjoy this. But and I do music as well because that's the music what I love. Yeah. And I think that's where I lost it. Like for me doing music, I lost it about four years ago, four yeah. or five years ago. And I went off the scene. I did a lot of engineering for other people because I didn't know what I wanted to so do. So we're just making the music for the... Yeah, the hell of it, yeah. yeah, and I started making music for for a lot of other people, and then I was just like, you know what, I can't stand. And this. did Gareth pull you out of that? You know, he was one of the people because he was just like, you know, and he kept doing like bad, badgering me now and again. I should like send us some new music, and all of a sudden, and then you know, we started doing, we did a track together, and then that was it. I was just like, you know, and that's when I was living in LA for a while as mm-hmm. well. And then I thought, you know what, I can't stand this. Yeah, and I left it, and then started getting back into the scene. But I think mainly it's just. I do music because I love it. Simple. What about you? Um, yeah, I'll say this from the heart. It's very important to me. Yeah, it's just all about making money. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord, this is going no, on blogs no, and joking. everything. I'm like, care that we are making money. No, you know, like, yeah, that quote's going to be taken out of context. No, <laughs> look, I think making music is the same as making any sort of art. It's about eliciting an emotional response. Right. Yeah. So when I'm making a track, if I feel something, whatever, like get goosebumps or whatever, I'm trying to elicit that emotional response in mm-hmm. other people. And I've kind of given up trying to second guess why tracks work and why they don't. And I don't even try and guess what the audience are going to like anymore. I just go on my own instinct. And if something gives me a particular feeling mm-hmm. and it might be a euphoria, it might be kind of like a sadness or like a longing for something, I'll go bang, that's it. That's the emotional response. Yeah. And then I put that track out there and I just hope there's enough other people who have yeah. similar taste to me yeah. to enjoy it. And, um, and uh, that's that's what it's all about, right? I fu- yeah, I found that if I look, uh, instead of making the music for the people, I made the music for what I love. And then they're generally the tracks which do better. Yeah. I do love the fact though, that he's not engineering anymore. Cause I've done the ghost producing myself back, yeah. you know, long, 14, 15 years ago, just cause I needed money. And I would say, um, okay, so I'll ghost produce Monday, Tuesday, and it's good money, right? I get paid like five, six hundred pounds a day, yeah. and then I'll make my own track on Wednesday. But what happens is I'd be creatively exhausted because all my good ideas yeah. are done on Monday and Tuesday, and then Wednesday never happens because I want a day off. And you just find, you may want to keep the good ideas for yourself, but you don't. You give yeah. them to other people, and before you know it, two years have gone by, and all of your best tracks have been sold off for a couple of grand, and your name will never be on them. No, yeah. Well, you had a couple of nice tunes along the way anyway. <laughs> the tunes of the years here in the episode of State of Uh Next question. Totally different question. From uh, B Hockey. What is your favorite insect and why? <laughs> you didn't see that one coming. Eh? I, I see it in your that's face. Not, that's, that's a good question. Don't like, don't like any of them, really. You can make it, a philosophical insects. turn that's about not this. Like, that's not like tigers and stuff, is it? They're no, animals. it's an insect. No. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't know if it's called this in other places or if this is the official name. But I, I do I do like what we call in England the daddy long legs. Daddy long. Okay, you have to explain it to me. Well, I have no it's, idea. It's like a big spider. It's about that big and it's got big long legs. There's, there must be a, a more technical name for it. But I think we call them hay wagons. Hey, like, that would sound legit. And apparently they're really good. They eat like mosquitoes and nasty oh, things. I, I like that. Like mosquitoes are my least favorite. I got stung like five times last night. So <laughs> I 
I it, hate those little ones. It's but. a weird one. I'm not like, I'm not, I'm petrified. If I see a spider, I can't go anywhere near it. I can't touch it. I'll, I'll literally cry. Yeah. But, but, but a daddy long legs, I'd be, well, I'd be all right with it. I'd say insect, <laughs> bee. I like bees. Yeah, because of... I money. just like, I just, I don't know. I, I well, like, they keep, keep the world alive, bees, don't yeah, they? I like That's bees. actually true, yeah. We're in danger of, apparently we're in danger of losing the bees and it's going to completely mess up the whole ecosystem of yeah. the world. So the bees, you got to got to look after the bees. Yeah. Bang. Bang, there you go. The last question already. I can't believe it has gone by so fast. <laughs> Uh, if being a DJ wouldn't have worked out, what would have you been doing right now? It's a question by Middle Middleasma. Middleasma. Well, I mean, I got fired from McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> you will be living on the streets. So, uh, you, so you wouldn't be working at McDonald's. I wouldn't no. be working at McDonald's. KFC. I left, Nando's, KFC. Maybe. I left school with zero GCSEs. I wasn't allowed to go to college because I had no GCSEs. I failed music in school, so. I, I, it's, it's quite worrying to be quite honest. <laughs> quite with worrying. You. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're all right. You're you're clever, so and so. So you, you'd be all right. Like you, you'd always find your feet. I think I'd be screwed. I mean, I think I would have been sad doing anything else other than music and just knowing that I had, you know, some natural ability in it mm -hmm. that, that I'd not follow. But I would have been doing something that it would, I would have been running a, a, a start company or something like that. Or maybe mm -hmm. I would have been like a music manager or whatever. It would have been something... Always with music. Yeah, something entrepreneurial, I think. Like, cause I, I don't follow rules particularly well. Um, and the, the thought of going somewhere to work sort of eight, nine hours a day mm -hmm. when I have to be there at nine o'clock in the morning or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I was never particularly good at that. So basically, it'd be something I could like follow my own rules. But other than that. So yeah. none of you uh, answer the question. Nice. I could, I, I could never work for anybody. You <laughs> could have been a professional gymnast, though. He's an exceptionally good gymnast. I'm not even joking. Oh, yeah. He can still do backflips back and can, stuff. Can yeah. you do a backflip here? Last time I did one, I nearly broke my neck in Miami because of him again. Well, you, you took <laughs> off the sunglasses, so you're, you have to do something yeah, else. I don't, you know, I don't so. know how your insurance policy is, but <laughs> <laughs> we, don't, yeah, we don't want a broken neck. <laughs> but the powers that be are probably going to say no to that. Okay, one. all right. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. What a letdown at the end of this conversation. Sorry, another time. Another time? Another time, yeah. Okay, well, thank you guys so much for the, this conversation. 10 questions with Gareth Emery and Ashley Wolbridge. Make sure to check out uh, Kingdom United, the 10th of May is uh, coming out. Uh, have a good uh, have a good day, guys. Thank you so much. Thanks for and, uh, having us. See you guys soon. Love Thanks, Ruben. Good times. Thank you. Lifting you higher. This is a state of trance.